friends. I recently finished six months of cancer treatment for follicular lymphoma. It was an experience that taught me a lot physically, mentally, and emotionally. In this video, I'll update you on the last several months and I'll share some of these learnings. Welcome to the Dress Up Mom. If you're already a subscriber, thank you and I love you. If you haven't subscribed, please do and tap the bell for notifications. In case you missed my previous videos, here's a recap of the situation. I have follicular lymphoma, a form of chronic cancer. In the beginning of the year, scans revealed that my tumors had grown big enough to a size where they needed to be treated. The goal of the treatment is to shrink them and have them grow back super super slowly so I have a very long remission. My treatment involves a combination of a chemo, bendamustine, and immunotherapy, rituxan. I go in monthly, two days in a row, for infusions of both, and this cycle repeats six times over the course of six months. In my last video, I shared that scans taken at the midway point showed that the treatment was working and the tumors were shrinking. My doctor was really pleased with the results and so was I. Now I just needed to finish the last couple rounds of my treatments and deal with the side effects. We're at Scripps and this is the beginning of the fifth round today. So I have this round two, two more, so four more of these to go. During my first round, I had pretty extensive reactions to the treatment. I had severe rashes all over my body, muscle cramps, body aches, extreme fatigue, a constant headache, and fever. The medication Zofran really helped a lot with the nausea I felt after chemo. Thank goodness things got a lot better for the next rounds. At the first sign of a rash, I started on a steroid pack and that definitely kept them at bay. I still had headaches and fatigue, but I didn't have the muscle cramps or fever. I did notice, however, that the treatment seemed to be cumulative. And after each round, it took longer and longer to get over the nausea and the other symptoms I was having. It's really hard to explain the feeling of chemo. It was unlike anything I had experienced before. I think the closest would be to what it might feel like if you were being slowly poisoned over time. The meds would make it so I wasn't throwing up or anything, but I never felt good. I was pretty nauseous and it just kind of lingered all the time until finally one morning I would wake up, I had kind of slept better and the nausea had subsided a, quite a bit. Also the type of chemo I had is very irritating to the veins and my veins and arms were really sore and bruised for weeks after. I kind of don't think that there was time for them to heal in between rounds. Fortunately, I have really good veins, but even with that, for some of the later rounds, it was hard for them to find a place. They had to go a couple times, two, three times, and sometimes it really hurt. This is my sixth and final round. This is day one, uh, my long infusion day. And my nurse today just did such an amazing job on my IV. I didn't even feel it at all. To me, that's always the worst part, but oh, I'm so grateful. It's a great sign. And tomorrow I get to actually go and ring that bell. I had some slight hair loss during chemo week that I would notice when I would, you know, wash my hair in the shower. But I have a lot of hair, so it really wasn't noticeable. I did have a couple rounds where I didn't have rashing and I didn't need to go on the steroid pack. Most of the time I did though, and the steroids had kind of some unpleasant side effects too. Wrecks my tummy and it made me really depressed and just feeling overall super yucky. I asked my doctor to confirm that the steroids can cause depression. I realized that I've never really suffered through a bout of depression before, and this experience gave me so much empathy for people who deal with this kind of thing regularly. I was also a terror to live with when I was on that steroid pack. For me, round five, the second to last round, was the most mentally challenging. I was so over it by this time 
and I felt like it all was just taking a really long time. In addition to not feeling super well, I was also mad that I was like back in COVID days and I couldn't do the things that I really like to do. Hot yoga, Orange Theory Fitness, singing karaoke, traveling, being out with people. I had to stay away from people because I was very immunocompromised from the immunotherapy drug I was taking. I couldn't risk getting sick. This is one funny side note. I told my doctor how much I missed hot yoga. And he's like, why? I think I would rather do chemo than hot yoga. We are kind of a weird bunch, us hot yogis, but I really had a good time sparring with my doctor throughout this whole experience. My treatments were always on a Monday and Tuesday. This gives the Sunday scaries a whole new meaning. I always dreaded going and I had to really psych myself up using meditation, breathing, repeating the healing code, talking to my body, talking to all of my relatives who had passed, who I really felt were looking over me and I kept asking for them to look over me. And finally, picking out what to wear. To make me feel better, I decided to dress it up a little when I went in for treatments. I picked things that were comfortable, but that had some sort of meaning to me and made me feel good. I know it might sound silly, but wearing some of my favorite things really did help me get through a difficult time. I rediscovered that walking at whatever pace you can is really good exercise and something I think most people can do. It's free too. Some days all I could do was walk around the block. Other days I walked for miles. The distance didn't matter. The fact that I kept moving every day did. I tried to make it an adventure and did some exploring. I found all these trails and parks around me that I didn't even know existed. For my final treatment, I made cupcakes to take to all the wonderful people who treated me throughout. My doctor and his staff, the scheduling team, and the incredible nurses. I got to ring a bell and it was so emotional, a feeling that I honestly will never forget. Right, here we go. I'm turning the bell. So weird, these people showed up. Aww. Oh. Don't do this. Don't find out. This is my best friend. Okay. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Yeah, decide. If you want to, yeah, touch it. Okay. Okay. Right. I was so blessed to have my husband Doug with me for every one of my infusions. Having him there made me feel safe. It was also nice to have my daughter Tiana waiting for us when we got home. She always had inspiring signs for me on our door and made dinners for us. Both she and Doug were there when I rang the bell and it was so special. My son Dane flew in from New York City several times and it was so nice having his burst of energy here with us. In addition to my immediate family, I had such an amazing support group from my extended family and wonderful friend group who brought food, sent cards, flowers, called, texted regularly and visited often. It made me feel special and really loved. My work colleagues also really had my back and supported me throughout the long process. I am truly blessed. Here are some of my learnings in no particular order. Mortality is very real, and I was reminded that I do have an expiration date. You truly never know what is around the corner and how much time you have left. It's okay and necessary to slow down at times. I can do hard things for a long period of time. I have a strong body and I've taken care of it my entire life. Going into this being in good shape really helped and paid off. It is important to keep your body moving as much as you can, especially as we age. Before this, I didn't make time to read books. I started reading again and I remembered how much I love it. From the time that I was a kid, I've always loved reading and I always was reading books. And for some reason, I felt like, oh, I didn't have time to do this anymore in my life. I've finished four books so far and I have no intention of stopping. It's important to get the best health care you possibly can. 
ask a lot of questions, be your own advocate, or have somebody there that's going to be your advocate. Also, review and challenge the bills you get because they can often be wrong. I'm good at my job and I'm a really hard worker. I love creating content. Every day I would remind myself that there are a lot of people out there worse off than me and this kind of helped me maintain a positive attitude. Chronic cancer can drive you crazy if you let it and I'm not going to let it. It's time to live my life to the fullest. Enjoy the good days, see the world while I can, and don't put off the things I wanna do. I have the best support group and felt so loved. I hope to pay it back to everyone who was there for me. Finally, overall, I realized that I have a pretty good life with some really amazing people in it. I'm very lucky. So here's what's next. My doctor says it takes three months from the last infusion for all the drugs to leave my body. I will have another scan at that point and then go see him to get a baseline. Assuming everything looks good, we'll go back to the watchful waiting period and hope for a really long remission. It's been a long haul, about seven months since I started treatment. In about a month, I hope to slowly start going back to doing the things that I miss doing and want to do, and I've added a few new things to try. Here are just a few of them. Singing karaoke with a live band, roller skating at the Hotel Del Coronado, and working with my niece to find and sell beautiful, sustainable wedding gowns that brides can use if they want an alternative option. I also have some really fun trips planned with my family that I'm super excited about. One of the reasons I made this video is so that I can go back and review these lessons and not forget them because sometimes life just gets in the way. What are some of the lessons you've learned going through a difficult time? I would love to know that in the comments below. I'd like to thank my subscribers for your heartfelt messages and support. It is truly such a special group of people in this community. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. Until next time, have fun and dress it up a little.